We have sent you some gear that is specifically designed for the art of slow jigging. Choose a suitable offshore location, use the gear supplied. If you are a half decent fishing journalist, you will accept the challenge. We'll give you an office round of applause should you catch five species or more. Good luck. Kind regards, Brian and the friendly team at EJ Todd's. Slow black jigs, swimming rubber jigs, assist hooks, metal witch jigging rods. We can catch fish with this gear. We're going on a road trip. Going south meant limiting the amount of species I could catch. So I waited for a good weather window, headed towards Gladstone in the tropics where I had a much better chance of catching three, five, and hopefully seven species. Gladstone's a few clicks that way. Sorry for the military terminology, but you and I are on a mission, the slow jig mission. The test has been set. Three legal species for a pass mark, five for a credit, and seven for a distinction. The weatherman said possible early shower, but finding up to a beautiful day. Mm, not sure if this is part of the plan, but we'll see what we can do. It's all about exploring and jigging today. Fishing in central Queensland today, out on the reef, and the benefit is there's a great diversity of fish here. It's all going to be about exploring and trying to find those fish to start with, and the good thing for us is that we're using a jigging technique, which is very much a mobile approach, so it's going to allow us to move around, try and find those fish. First sign of life, we're going to start jigging. The beauty about a technique like jigging is it can be so simple. I love the simplicity of having a box of jigs, a couple of rolls of leader and a couple of outfits. It just allows you to not get caught up in your fishing gear and spend more time fishing and just rotating through a few lures and a couple of outfits. In this case, two jigging rods. I've got a PE 1.5 to 3. I've got a PE 1.2 to 2.5. So light to medium size, matched up with the right outfits. Slow jig reels. I've got a 40 pound braid and a 25 pound PE Sunline braid matched up with the correct leaders and hopefully that's going to get the job done. There's a few fish on the sounder. Just picking the right jig for this job at the moment. There's fish all over the sounder. And predominantly going to fish three types of jigs today. I've got some skirted jigs. I've got these wider style jigs. And I've got more your typical knife style jig. And they're all going to give you a different action in the water and a different profile. And between those three different types, I reckon one's going to do the job today. Just working out which one. Quickly changing jigs. Had a few half-hearted taps on that, but nothing really committed. So let's change the profile. Go to the swimming rubber jig. Put a bit of extra movement down there, slightly different presentation, and see if I can convert those taps into a hooker. Get that A lot like bait fishing at times, you've just got to leave the jig there, they'll whack it a few times. The trick's not to pull it away once, they, once they've once found it, that's the idea of slow jigging. Let the fish come and eat it. There's two to four hooks swinging off these jigs, so there's plenty of potential to hook up. Just leave it there for them to eat it. We have a hussar. One of our tropical snappers. A lot of anglers come and use these for their, catch these fish and use them as live baits and strip baits for fish like red emperor. But they also very handy on the table. And there's our Hussa, and our Queensland ID mat. This is 25 centimetres for those, and he is 29 centimetres. One to the tally. Oh. Oh. Trouted. Something like my jig is just a little bit more than I did. That was a very solid bite. Just doing the little Water wines and the jigs popped off the bottom and I paused it and it went clunk and went back home to the reef. One to a big trout, none to me. Slow jigging has its heritage in Japan and like all Japanese techniques, it's really well researched, very precise and very effective. It's a better one. There you go. Little quarter wines, about a metre off bottom and there you go, something you just crash tackle that. Red throat, beautiful. Oh, gee, they go hard. Aren't they pretty? Oh, 
they put up a tussle. Pretty, pretty fish. He's eating the slow blat, scoffed it. And that is the red throat emperor. Such a cool fish, very aggressive. They pull super hard. This one will, we just touch legal. Put them on the measure and see if it's gonna be another one to add to the tally. Legal size in Queensland, 38 centimetres. And he's 40 centimetres, toe to tail. Here's another one for the tally. Not much to rest on out here. Got a little passenger having a bit of a well earned rest. It's one of the keys to slow jigging is to work out the retrieve the fish want. The Japanese have spent countless hours perfecting a technique like this. They're all about the amount of the revolution. You hear them talking about quarter wind, half wind, full wind or two, two winds. It's all about how much movement to work the jig. It's all to do with this reel. It's a slow, slowly geared reel designed perfectly for this. It's a little bit like low range in your four wheel drive. It's designed for that specific type of work. And these fish basically gonna to respond to how that jig looks and it's not using so much rod work. The rod's perfectly designed so that the tip works with the reel. So you're not spending your time hard jigging like you, you might with some other jigging techniques. This is all about letting the reel and the rod together do the work. That's a better fish. That just took off a bit differently. Oh, started out slowly, then woke up. And it woke up because it's a trout. Yes. Oh. Yes, love catching these. Just love catching these critters. And that's the benefit of having your, all those assist hooks on your jig. Fish doesn't always have to get a hook in the mouth because as long as it eats the jig, there's every chance it's gonna get a hook pinned somewhere. Just allow you to catch those fish that bite wherever the lure's positioned. Aren't they pretty and so tasty. In Queensland, legal size for these fish is 38 centimeters. He's touching 41. Another legal, we have a pass mark. Always handy to get the pass mark, a bit of relief. Now let's see if we can up the score. There's a reason when I'm chasing species like coral trout, I like really rounded shaped jigs and it's very often because of the type of food you see trout feeding on. There's something that's been regurgitated from this fish. It's very much like your typical aquarium fish, they're round bodied. That means that they're not a fast species, these aquarium fish, so they're easy fodder for species like the coral trout. And for that reason, if you can match the shape of your jig to the type of fish that these guys are feeding on, you stand a much better chance of getting a bite. It's all about watching your line the whole way through these retrieves, on the way down and on the way up, because those bites can come at any time. Very often as that jig works its way down, it looks like a fleeing bait fish. They'll very often eat it as it heads to the bottom and then sometimes as it does its slow little twitched return, hanging just above the bottom, they can eat it then as well. It's all about line management and watching your line. Having visible braids like this orange sunline can really help your chances when you're jigging in terms of shows you immediately that something's happened to the lure whether it's hit the bottom or you've had a bite because it's easy to pick up against the water. To help assist you feel your bites in the bottom, always try and run the braid along your finger whether it's your thumb off the spool or through thumb and forefinger just to give you that extra sensitivity. Wait, whatever it is. Oh, crikey. Didn't that pole axe it on the drop? <laughs> just got to watch that line as it goes down. It just to be, it got ripped out. I had to be really quick with the thumb just to try and engage. Get it back. Oh, there's a big shark on this. It's a trout with a shark on it. Oh, I was lucky. There's a very big shark down there. Whew to go fast there. They just try to get you back to home so very, very quickly. You've got to have your wits about you when you're jigging in the tropics. It's when they bite. They don't give you much time to think about it. They want to go home. Just going through the bag of lures to see if we can mix things up a little bit. Found this slow blat in the oval shape. Gold, very good color on the reef. The moment its hooks are designed Obviously for fish that are a bit smaller than I'm chasing, so I'm gonna upgrade it with some heavier ones. See if I can put this into action and attempt something big down there. Oh, that's, a, that's a trout. That's a good trout. That's a good trout. There's a shark here, so I'm gonna have to go hard. I'm gonna have to go very hard here. I might have lost the battle here. Come on, come on. Oh, got him. That's a red throat. Oh, far out, they go hard. Woo, look at this. 
pound for pound, they pull so very hard. These red throats, I reckon they'll take on a trout any day of the week. I've had fish like this and twice its size, bending rods to the point where you can feel the grips bending in your hand, they do pull that hard. And they obviously love a jig. It comes to slow jigging, you can do it a number of ways from the boat. The popular ones is to anchor up, sit right on top of a spot, and just carefully and slowly work the jig through the fish. And the other way, if you want to explore a bit better, is to drift with them, and you obviously need the right current conditions and depth to do it, but it's all, always a, a case of just picking the jig weight that you want to get you to where the fish are and then just trying to keep that jig in amongst them as much as possible, working out what retrieval, tune them up. Got him. Find out what it is. <laughs> we will find out what it is. Slow bites, he kept coming back. Oh, it is a squid. Catching these massive squid offshore is completely uncanny and ironic being that in a previous AFN fishing show episode we're in Sydney Harbour with guide Stuart Reid using Yamashita jigs trying to catch a two kilo squid and here we are doing it on slow jigging techniques. I got it. Maybe not one of the species I'd planned on catching coming out to the reef. Jig eating calamari. Slow jigging. I had a suspicion at one stage I thought the way they were slowly coming onto these like a bait. I was thinking this could be a squid down there. And my well, boys at EJ's are very well known for the Yamashita squid jigs. It's probably not quite how they expected me to use <laughs> one of those slow jigs. But hey, I'll take it. That's number four and it's entree. Could be calamari number two, I'm hoping. Wow, come across a hot squid bite. It's good, we got rid of the ink. Yes, entree well and truly sorted. Calamari number two, I think with the main of coral trout or red throat in for all care of the jigs. Kind of like the sound of that. Oh, straight away. Straight away. On the drop. <laughs> Value of using your sounder. And then being able to drop jigs straight onto fish. And it's fighting like a trout. Oh, it's a red throat. Wow. <laughs> I love those jigs descending from the heavens. Lovely. When you buy Japanese, you buy precision and you pick up one of these jigs and that's exactly what you get. Every jig is designed to move in a very specific manner. Their shape, their weighting, all make them behave differently and that's what attracts fish. On top of that, you get a very specific shape that looks so much like a bait fish and with these tropical bait fish varieties, there's sometimes an uncanny relationship between your jig and what the bait looks like. That was a better hit. What do we got? Get him up before the sharks maybe get to him. Not sure what this is. What do we got? Oof. It's gone pretty hard. We have a tribale. I love a jig. Beautiful. No size limit required in Queensland. He's 36 centimetres. Important thing. He's another species. Another one to add to the tally. Number five. Going back. A day that started in wind and rain and finishing in sun is now over. So the EJ Todd's team, thank you for the challenge. The gear worked admirably, more so than my fishing ability. My pride is barely intact and I think if it was to be given a report, it would read like my school reports. Nigel applied himself to the task, he would have pushed towards distinction level. Not today. Time to go in for a tub, boat and myself and a well-earned beverage. Let's get out of here.